In this video, we're going to study the metric system along with measurement and unit conversions. Here you can see the learning goals for the video, and what you can do is follow along with the Word document that's provided to you. After you've completed the Word document, the practice problems within, and seeing all the problems in this PowerPoint, you can then attempt some of the problems from the unit packet for the numeracy scale section of this course. So we're going to start off with what measurement is. In science we take many measurements and it's really just assigning numbers to objects or events. Uh, a measurement is typically going to be a type of observation, specifically a quantitative observation. Quantity meaning a numerical observation as opposed to descriptive with words, so a numerical observation. Um, and usually we take those measurements using some kind of measurement instrument like a meter stick, uh, you might use a graduated cylinder, you might use a um, a balance, you might use a simple ruler, so those are all ways in which we can obtain measurements about uh, objects or events. So here we're measuring, for example, the height of the plant, most likely in uh, centimeters. Uh, and a measurement is going to have two parts to it. There's going to be the number and the unit. So for example, the plant has a height of 87, there's a number, and then the unit is in centimeters. And some units lend themselves better uh, for different situations. For example, you wouldn't want to measure the height of the plant in kilometers, and um, you're more likely going to stick to something like centimeters, which makes more sense for that particular plant. So many things can be measured. Um, these are just some examples of different things that we might measure in the lab or in daily life. So you might measure the length of something, width, or height of something. You'll see a lot of that in math class especially. Um, you might want to measure the mass of some substance that you're using in a lab or see what the volume of a certain um, object is. You might be monitoring the temperature of substances over time um, or during, during an experiment. So there's so many different things that you can measure um, and we have so many tools that allow us to uh, do that. And if we know how to use those tools properly and we know how to interpret those measurements, we can make better sense of what our labs and our results are all about. Many things in life require measurements, not just in the science classroom, but many things in your daily life. So when you're taking your body temperature, um, when you're baking or cooking, right? If you don't measure the right amounts or um, quantities of ingredients, well, your recipe might not turn out so great. Um, if you're traveling, if you're on a road trip, you might need to calculate the distances you're going and the fuel costs. So when you're taking these measurements, one recommendation is that you measure accurately and carefully. Um, as you can see here, this is a little joke where you measure twice, but you'd only have to cut once. This person obviously didn't measure properly, um, maybe only measured once, and if they measured twice, they wouldn't have made this little mistake here where they're missing the E. So before we go into measurement um, conversions, and calculations, I briefly want to talk about the history of measurement. M measurement has been used for a very long time um, to help with uh, trade, selling. Um, so one problem with measurement early on in history was that um, often parts me oftentimes measurements were based off of body parts or common objects that people would have around. So for example, if you look over here, um, at one point in time, one inch was defined as the uh, having three barley corns end to end. Um, there was a, a unit of measurement called the uh, cubit, which was the length of a forearm. Um, but there were many problems with this. So for example, um, if you look at the three barley corns, if you had three barley corns in a bag and you want to get one inch of, let's say, a piece of uh, wood to build something with, um, you weren't really sure if you were always, get, always getting an inch every single time. We're not sure if every single barley corn um, has the same size. So you might have three barley corns one day that has a different inch than three barley corns a different day. Um, and that can lead to fraud, getting the wrong, uh, the wrong measurement um, for what you're trying to obtain. So they were basically too vague, too arbitrary. So to solve that problem, we needed to come up with a standard of measurement, something that would always be an inch, for example. Now, to know more about the history of measurement, you can watch this video over here. You just click on the link and it should bring you to a YouTube video about the history of measurement. Here's another example again of the cubit. The cubit was the measurement um, that was used a long time ago um, to help build the pyramids. And you can see the cubit over here, how it's 
defined. So with all this confusion with the units based on body parts and objects that were inconsistent in size, um, many scientists had a hard time being consistent with uh, the measurements they were taking. And so that called for consistency and universality. We needed some kind of standard of um, measurement in order to get rid of all the confusion um, that existed. Um, different areas in the world had different units of measurement and it was very very difficult to figure out if we're on the same page or not with um, the things that we're trying to measure. So to come up with that consistency um, most countries in the world follow this system of measurement called the metric system or the international system of units. Um, so most countries in the world do use it. There's three countries that don't and you can see them on the map over here, um, but hopefully eventually uh, they will. Uh, but the fact that the majority of the countries use this system make, makes things a lot more consistent and easier to understand in terms of the uh, measurements when we're trying to purchase things and uh, build things and apply measurements to uh, practical situations. So let's go talk about the metric system in a bit more detail. Let's talk about its advantages and why it's such a good system. Um, the first thing about the metric system that uh, you should truly appreciate is that there's one fundamental base unit for each quantity. So for example, um, length, that's measured in meters. You can have variation of the meter, you can have the centimeter, the millimeter, but for length in the metric system, we're always going to use the unit of meter. Um, for mass, we're going to use the unit of grams. You can have variations of the gram, you can have the kilogram, you can have the milligram, the decagram, there's so many different variations of it, but they're all related. But the point is that it's always the gram that we're using for mass. Um, for volume, we'll be using the uh, liter, and again, you can have variation uh, variations of the liter. So there's one fundamental base unit for each thing that you're trying to measure. Length will always be measured in some kind of meter, uh, mass in some kind of gram, volume in some kind of liter, and there's other examples of um, quantities that you can measure too and they have their own defined um, base unit for uh, their measurement. So here we can see for example a guitar has a length of one meter. So we're measuring length, we're going to use meter. We're not going to use grams, we're going to use meter for length specifically. Okay. Um, and again you can, so you can see over here for length we have meter, you can have variations of that. You can have the kilometer, centimeter, millimeter, but it's all based on the meter. So it's very straightforward and easy to convert between one and the other. Here if you're, let's say, measuring mass, you have gram as a unit, but you can have variations of that. Kilogram, centigram, and milligram, they're all related to the gram by some factor. We'll see what that is later on, but it's very straightforward. You don't have to, um, you don't have to think about doing too many conversions if you're only using the gram for the mass. And then finally we have our volume here measured in liters and there's again variations of the liters all related to each other. In this table you can see a variety of different other um, quantities that you might want to measure um, and then you can see the uh, SI unit that's given to them um, and these, this is the unit that we typically use to measure them. So the SI unit is nice because um, it's consistent and we're going to use the same unit all over the world if you're using the SI system for a particular uh, type of measurement. And again here's another table that shows quantities you might want to measure and uh, the SI unit that's used to measure it. So you can see mass will use the gram, length will use the meter, temperature will use the uh, degrees uh, Celsius or the Kelvin. Um, you can see the volume, the liter, the milliliter, and often we'll use the cubic meter and the cubic centimeter. Um, and there's a variety of other measurements that you'll learn later on. Um, but the point is that the quantities have uh, defined units based on the SI system. In this column here, you can see the equipment that you would use to measure the specific uh, quantity. And then this column here, you can see the definition for the different quantities. So it's a good idea to read through what these quantities are, how you would measure them, how you would um, measure them, what equipment you would use, and then also um, units that would apply to it. So if I tell you that you're measuring the mass of something and you tell me that the unit is in meters, you're a little bit off there. You need to make sure you go back and take a look at what um, units you'd use. You'd use something in the gram form. Okay. 
Um, so be familiar with what units belong to which quantities and uh, brief uh, basic definition of each quantity and also the um, equipment you would use to measure the particular quantity. So the old system, um, the U.S. customary system, the imperial system we used to call it, so it's not the, um, not the uh, SI system. The problem with that is that there were so many different units for the same quantity. So for example, length, instead of just being meters, well, it could be in yards, it could be in inches, and different instruction books would have different units for length, and you'd have to convert from one to the other, and that kind of got, kind of got confusing. Um, volume, rather than being liters or uh, cubic centimeters, you could have it in tablespoons and cups and pints and quarts and gallons, and that's just confusing and annoying. Mass, rather than just being grams, you'd have it in ounce and pound and ton, and that was very difficult to convert between. So this imperial system here, definitely not as good as our um, international system, of, of, of our SI system that we're using. The other cool thing about the metric system is that it's all based on this base of 10. So I told you that, for example, the length is measured in meters, um, but you could have different variations of meters. Um, so you could have the kilometer, the hectometer, the decameter, the centimeter, um, and all those variations of meter they're actually all related to each other by factors of 10. Basically, you multiply by 10 or divide by 10 different numbers of times to convert from one unit to another. And it's pretty easy to multiply by 10 and divide by 10, right? 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So it's very, very easy to convert from um, one unit to another uh, because they're all factors of 10. So if you had, um, let's say, a gram, and you want it to go to um, milligram, and I'm going to teach you this later on, but basically you divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. Because a milligram is a thousand times smaller than the base unit, which is the gram. So just to clarify again, the base unit is the unit that doesn't have that little prefix in the front. The prefix is the word that comes in the front. Um, so the meter, gram, and liter, they're the base unit um, for the different measurements. And if you add the prefix in the front, then that um, leads to a different variation of that unit. So there's the meter as the base unit, and you can have the uh, decimeter, which is 10 times smaller than the meter. You could have the centimeter, which is 100 times smaller than the meter. You could have the millimeter, which is a, which is a thousand times smaller than the meter. So the point is that um, the base unit is related to the other units by factors of 10, by either multiplying by 10 a few times or dividing by 10 a few times, which is very, very straightforward and easy to do. And uh, we know to multiply or divide by the prefix that's placed in front of the base unit. So you could have the gram, you can get the decigram, the centigram, the milligram, or you can get the decagram, the hectogram, or the kilogram by simply multiplying or dividing, and I'll teach you when to do that. So the third point really relates to the second point. Since all those units are related by factors of 10, um, you can easily convert from the base unit to other units or from one unit to another um, using simple multiplication of um, by 10 a few times or division by 10 a few times. So let's say, for example, you want to convert the unit of the uh, one meter guitar into centimeters. Well, you take a look at the meter and uh, you'd look at the prefix centi. And what you'll notice is that the um, centimeter is 100 times smaller than the base unit. So you have a one meter guitar, and you want to convert that into centimeters. So basically you're asking, how many centimeters are there in a meter? So you can simply multiply your one meter by a hundred because there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. Now a hundred is a fact is uh, a factor of ten. It's like you're multiplying by ten two times. 
Um, and so when you do one meter times 100 centimeters per meter, so this centimeter per meter here, that's what that means, centimeters, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. Notice how you have meter multiplied by meter over here. You can cross meters out when you have a similar units on top and bottom, and that gives you 100 centimeters. So your one meter guitar, if you were to convert that into centimeters, is 100 centimeters. It's still the same length, it's just a different unit to represent that length. It's kind of like saying, I have one loony, or I have 100 pennies. Right, 100 pennies, well, I mean, if they still had value, if we still use them, um, 100 pennies is worth a dollar, um, and a loony is worth a dollar. It's still the same thing, just in a different form. But the point is we divided or multiplied by 10 here in order to convert from one unit to another, which the imperial system is not, um, does not work very straight, in a very straightforward fashion, as you would see here. So again, you can see here that many of the units are related in the metric system by factors of 10. Um, it's very straightforward to convert millimeters to meters, meters to kilometers, grams to kilogram, kilograms to a ton. Um, whereas in the imperial system, uh, things are a bit more confusing. There's 12 inches to a foot, 3 feet to a yard, 1,760 yards to a mile, 16 ounces to a pound. Uh, all the factors are different here. They're not all factors of 10. Whereas here, it's all factors of 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000 as well. And then here, you can take a break and uh, laugh at this lame joke. All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to convert um, from one unit to another. Uh, so here you have the main, the three main steps involved uh, in conversions. So you determine what unit you're converting to and from. That's your first step. Determine the conversion factor. Um, the conversion factor is basically how many times you're going to multiply by 10 or divide by 10. Um, and you do that by figuring out what prefix you have in front of the base unit. Uh, and then afterwards, you actually do the multiplication or move the decimal. So when you multiply, um, you're basically just moving a decimal to the left, uh, to the right. And when you divide, you're moving a decimal to the left. And you'll notice that I put a little bit of a description here of when you're going to multiply and when you're going to divide. You're going to multiply when you're going from a big unit to a small unit. So for example, when you're going from, let's say, meter to centimeter, you're going to multiply or move the uh, decimal to the right. Um, when you're going from a um, small unit to a big unit, you're going to divide. So for example, if you're going the other way around, me, uh, centimeters to meters. So remember these three main steps here, and you should be able to convert from one base unit to another in a very straightforward fashion. So for the practice problems we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do the conversion using the multiplication division method. And I'm also going to show you how to do the conversion using the uh, moving the decimal method to the left or to the right. So here we want to convert um, the kilometer to the centimeter. So that's our conversion. We want to do kilometer to centimeter. So what we're doing here is um, we're going to take a look at this little table over here. It basically tells you how much larger um, different units are compared to the base unit. And the base unit is the part that says um, no prefix. So for example, if I had the base unit and I want to go to the deca base unit, I'd have to multiply by 10 because it's 10 times larger than the base unit, which is 1 here. If I want to go to hec to uh, the hecto, I'd have to multiply by 10, and then by 10 again, so basically by 100. Okay. Um, another way you can see what you have to multiply by to go from the base unit to the uh, different unit is by taking a look at this um, column over here with the 10 to the power of. That tells you how many times you have to, um, how many zeros different, or how many factors of 10 different star between the base and the unit you want to convert to. So let's go take a look at um, the kilo. So we're going from kilo to the uh, centimeter over here. And so take a look at how many zeros differences there are. There's So if you're going from kilo to hecto, there's one difference there. Okay. Then there's another difference to go to the deca. 
then another to go to the base. Okay, so we have one, two, three. Uh, and then you have one, two. So there's a total of five zeros different between the units of the kilometer and the centimeter. So now we have to figure out, are we moving the decimal to the right or to the left? Now we're going from a big to a small unit. When you go from a big to a small unit, you want to move the decimal to the right. So we're just going to put R for right. And the number of spaces you're going to move the decimal is basically the number of zeros different that you figured out. So we're going to move it um, five spaces to the right. So here, I'm going to write, I'm going to show you my work here. So we have 1.0. And I'm going to take this decimal and count five spaces to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. This is where your decimal is now. Write your zero down over here. So now wherever you have one of these little peaks, you're going to put another zero. So zero, 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 zero. Don't put the zero where the decimal is because that's your decimal is there. Your zero can't go there. So we have one kilometer is equal to 100,000. Point zero centimeters. So again, we saw the number of zeros that were different between the two units, and we decided to move our unit to the right because we were going from a large unit to a small unit. And this makes sense. What we're basically saying is the kilometers is large. It can fit many centimeters inside of it because it's large. So we should have a bigger number for the centimeters here, um, not a smaller number because again, many centimeters fit inside a kilometer. It's still the same distance, it's just represented as a different unit. So that was the moving the decimal method. Now we're going to try the multiplication method. So now we're going to try the multiplication method. It's the same question. I just want to show you what gives the same answer. So same idea, we're going from kilometers to centimeters. So write down what your conversion is, kilometers to centimeters. And what you want to do is figure out how many zero differences there are. So find your kilometers 10 to the power of 3, find your uh, centimeters 10 to the power of negative 2, and count out the difference between them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So five zeros different. Uh, we are going from a bigger to smaller situation. Because we're going from bigger to smaller, you're going to want to multiply. So how many times are you going to multiply by 10? Um, well, you're going to multiply by 10 five times. Five times. So you're going to have your one point oh kilometers multiply that by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 so one two three four five times and that will give us our hundred thousand point zero centimeters um, and instead of writing out 10 times 10 times five, five times what you could have done is you could have simply done this here so 1.0 kilometers times 10 to the power of how many times you're multiplying it by so 10 to the power of 5 that means you're doing 10 times 10 times 10 times five times and you can even put units to be more accurate. So basically the idea I want to show you here is that let's say you're trying to get rid of the kilometers unit. 
you want the kilometers unit to be on the t on the bottom and the uh, centimeters unit is the one you want to keep you want that to be on top so it's a great way to practice unit cancellation because we're doing a multiplication here and you have the same unit on top and on the bottom they cancel out and what's left over is your centimeters so you know you're doing the right thing by doing this multiplication here we'll try another sample problem together we're going to convert from the kilogram to the um, milligram so you can try it out first yourself and then afterwards take a look to see if um, you got the right answer um, so what you should do is pause the video try it out and then see if you got the right answer so from kilogram to milligram so let's take a look here um, so we have the kilogram over here and we're trying to go to the uh, milligram down here so let's count the number of zeros difference so one two three four five six six zeros different between the units uh, we're going from a big to small we're going from kilogram to milligram big to small so that means we're gonna have to move our decimal to the right and we're gonna move it by six spaces to the right so we have 1.0 take this decimal and start counting one two three four five and six here's your new decimal spot here where you end it off put a zero here and then put zeros where those peaks are so one two three four and five so one kilogram is equal to a million point oh milligrams and that makes sense you can fit many milligrams into the kilogram you can do the same steps but with the multiplication method or the division method so again you're going from a big unit to a smaller unit there's six zero difference between them as we saw on the previous slide because we're going from bigger to smaller we're going to multiply we're going to multiply by 10 six times and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the shorthand method so 1.0 kilograms times 10 to the power of 6 instead of doing 10 times 10 times 10 I'm going to do 10 to the power of 6 and remember I want to get rid of kilograms and keep milligrams so I'll put milligrams on top here milligrams in a kilogram that's what this con that's what this number is this is the conversion factor it tells you how many of a certain unit there is in another unit so there's 10 points there's 10 to the power of 6 milligrams in one kilogram and we have one kilogram here so we'll cross out the kilogram cross out the kilogram we're left with um, our milligram there so our final answer is going to be 10 to the power of 6 or 1 million you can write it like that as well milligrams different method but same answer in the end because it's the same logic you're when you're multiplying by 10 a few times you're moving your decimal to the right so now we'll try this question out here we want to go from centimeters to uh, meters okay uh, so let's go find our centimeter which is over here and our meter I don't see meter oh you're right yes meter is a is a base um, unit so there's no prefix for the meter so we're going back to this base here um, a meter we'll make it our M here um, and we're gonna go count how many zeros differences there are one two two zeros difference between uh, centimeter and meter so let's take a look here what's happening though look if you look carefully we're going from centimeters to meters we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit okay, a smaller unit to a larger unit so rather than move to the right, we're actually going to move to the left this time by two spaces because it's the zeros difference. So we'll write down our 2.3 here. And we'll start moving our decimal to the left two spaces. So one, two. So here's our new decimal spot. Put a zero here and a zero at the peak over here. Remember, not where the... Um, new decimal point is and now we have 
our final answer is 0 0.023 meters. So we have 0 0.023 meters. Just like that. You can do the same process using the multiplication method. So again, centimeters to meters, uh, your base units 10 to the power of 0 here, and your centimeters 10 to the power of negative 2. Um, and so we're going to count there's two zeros different, um, and we're going from a smaller to bigger. So when you go from smaller to bigger, um, you're going to be dividing instead of multiplying. Um, so how many times do we have to multiply by? Well, it's the numbers of zeros that are different. And so we're going to take our 2.3 centimeters, and we're going to multiply by 10 twice. So times 10, times 10. Oops, sorry, now multiply by 10. I just made a mistake there. Let's erase that. And we're going to divide by 10 twice, divided by 10, divided by 10, and that's going to give you your 0 0.023 meters. Um, you could have also done the method with the exponent, so 2.3 centimeters, divided by 10 to the power of two, and that would have given you 0 0.023 meters. So here, you can practice, see if you've been paying attention to the slides and reading carefully, which of the following sets of three units are all metric measurements of length. Pause the video, try it out, see if you get the right answer. Once you have selected your answer, come back and uh, check on my slide. So we are trying to see if they're all measurements of length. So these are all measurements of length here. Uh, these are all measurements of length. Right away, I can cross C out because gram is not a measurement of length. Um, and these here are all measurements of length as well. So we have A, B, and D. They're all measurements of length. But the thing is, we're asking which ones are metric measurements. So inch, foot, and yard, they're not metric measurements. Um, here, D, kilometer, foot, decimeter, these are all meters, metric measurements, but the foot is not. So we cancel that, and that leaves us with B, all base meter, um, and then with a different prefix. So they're uh, related to each other by those factors of 10 that we saw earlier or moving the decimal. There is another method that you can use to convert from um, one unit to another. It's called the staircase method. Uh, basically you create this staircase using the base unit and the different prefixes and then you um, count how many steps you're taking up or down in the staircase uh, to know what you're going to do in terms of moving the uh, decimal. So if you're going um, let's say from the base unit and you're going down the staircase you're going to move the decimal to the right you're going from the base unit to a smaller unit so you're going to move it to the right or multiply by 10 uh, depending on the number of times you moved if you go up the staircase the opposite you're going to move the decimal to the left or divide by 10 um, based on the number of times that you moved uh, up the staircase and you can watch a little video here to go over that concept in some more detail there's also a trick here to remember the staircase, so kilo, king, hecto, henry, di, deca, by the base unit, um, drinking, deci, chocolate, centi, milf, milli. This doesn't have all the units that you would see, um, but it does have a fair amount to know how to convert between. And especially for science, you want to make sure you know how to convert uh, to centi and milli and kilo. You'll see that a lot, especially when you're measuring substances in the lab, especially when you get to grade 11 chemistry and you're dealing with quantities of chemicals, you'll see the grams, but also the kilograms and milligrams, and you have to read carefully and convert to the proper unit. 
So here's a practice problem you could attempt um, using the staircase method if you'd like. So we want to go from meter to centimeter. Uh, so here's our base unit and we're traveling to centimeter. So we're going down the staircase one and two times. Um, and so since we're going down the staircase, we're going to be moving that decimal to the uh, right uh, or multiplying by 10 twice. But if we were to do that, we'd have one, two. Here's our new decimal spot. We put a zero right after the decimal. So we have that 598.67 uh, meters is equal to 59867.0 centimeters. So 59,867 centimeters is what uh, 598 meters would be worth. And that makes sense because the centimeter is a smaller unit and you can fit that many centimeters into a larger meter, right? If you have a big meter stick, a one meter stick, um, you fit a hundred centimeters onto that one meter stick because the meter is bigger than the centimeter. You can attempt this uh, similar practice problem here. Um, so again, our base unit in this case is the gram. We're going to the milligram, so one, two, three and we're moving our decimal towards the right since we're going from bigger to smaller again um, so 65.3.43 move this towards the right three times one two three here's our new decimal place here's your zero and a zero here so we get six five four three oh point oh milligrams. 65,430 milligrams is what you'd uh, get in 65.43 grams. And there's another practice problem here, this time going the other way. So we're going from kilogram to milligram. So we're starting up here and we're counting how many steps we have to take to get to the um, milligram. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Six. We're going down the stairs, so we have to move the decimal towards the right six spaces. So we have 0 0.056. Let's move that decimal to the right six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Put that decimal here. Put your zero after the decimal and zeros at the little peaks over here. And this is our new measurement, 0 0.056 uh, uh, kilograms is equal to 5600.0 zero, 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 zero milligrams. 56,000 milligrams. Notice that when we move the decimal to the right, you don't want to keep the zeros that were here in the number. They're now gone. Um, if they're to the left of the number you're converting, they can um, you can drop those. Like it wouldn't make sense to have 0056000.0. Okay, those zeros were in the front of the placeholder to show that you have a decimal, 56. This here is a neat video to show um, why it's important to have a consistent unit of measurement. Um, so why it's important for different countries to have different um, units of measurement as well. Um, NASA actually lost quite a bit of money um, because some of their scientists working on a project were using the imperial measurements and other scientists were using the metric measurements and it's not quite the same language. Uh, for units. So while they were trying to measure lengths of different bolts and nuts, so on and so forth, they were using different units of measurement and that led to confusions and they lost tons and tons of money uh, because their orbiter that they tried to build um, didn't turn out so well. So in summary, we saw that measurements are very useful in everyday life and also in the science classroom. We briefly saw the history of um, measurements, how they were very inconsistent, but then we came up with the metric system to make things a bit more consistent. Um, and it, it's a beautiful system because it really um, allows you to convert very easily from one unit to another, and there's one base unit for each quantity. So, for example, the uh, length is in the meter as opposed to being in the foot, the yard, the inch, so on and so forth. 
Um, so science does use that metric system. Um, and you can see all the benefits of the metric system here. And we saw how to convert from one unit to another in a metric system by either multiplying, dividing, or uh, moving the decimal to the left or the uh, right. And we should know how to do various conversion problems um, as we saw in this uh, presentation here. Uh, so in order to um, move on and improve, you need to make sure you review the notes that you saw here in the PowerPoint presentation, this video. Do all the practice problems that are in the notes in the numeracy package, as well as any other conversion worksheets your teacher may provide to you. And there's a few other videos that you can watch here. I will briefly post another video out shortly to show one more sample problem um, that some students may get stuck on when doing conversions. So keep an eye out for that as well.